Right, good afternoon everybody. My name is John Hunt. I'm a Somerset County Councillor for the Division of Bishop's Hull and Taunton West here in Somerset. Um, and this is my first ever video report to the uh, Parish Council of Bishop's Hull for uh, tomorrow evening's meeting, which is Thursday the uh, 8th of March 2018. Uh, prior to making this video, um, I thought I'd just Google um, other councillors' reports to um, two parish councils uh, in the UK just to get a few tips, uh, idea of content, length of video, that sort of thing. And to my great surprise, I couldn't find any videos at all from county councillors giving their report to a parish council in this country. So I'm almost thinking that this could well be an historic moment. So I'm going to claim that this is the first ever video councillor's report given by a county councillor to a parish council. If you know differently, get in touch. Anyway, on to the more serious. Right, so let's get on with the report then, shall we? Start off with parking. Um, I've had lots and lots of uh, emails and social media contact from residents regarding four main areas um, in the village. These are uh, Richmond Park, Waterfield Drive, the corner of Bishop's Hall Road and Bishop's Hall Hill. So that's opposite Never Clay. Um, and also Shootwater Hill, Shootwater Close, that area um, at the bottom of the hill there. Um, I'll start um, with uh, Richmond Park. Uh, residents there have asked me for a, um, a residence parking zone, residence parking area. Um, to my great surprise, when I asked uh, Highways for this, um, they said actually this is being considered, um, or they will consider this rather, and they're more than happy as long as I can get over 60% of the affected residents um, in Richmond Park to agree. Um, then they will then go to the next stage with this. Um, I have been down to Richmond Park. I met, I met most of you on the 24th of February. Um, I knocked on the doors of those that didn't meet me outside. Um, and, uh, and in fact, it's around 80% is the, is, is the amount of people in agreement with this at the moment. Um, I would just like to briefly say to those of you, should you be watching this video, those of you that did object, and there were only a couple of objections, I completely understand your objections, as do the other residents. And uh, should this parking scheme take place prior to it happening, I will talk to the County Council about your concerns. Um, and I fully understand them. So just take that into account. Um, should this happen, uh, you will not be forgotten. I will take your concerns um, in, into account and make sure that the Council Highways Department are very much aware of your concerns. Um, moving on to Waterfield Drive. Um, several issues here. Most of these issues, um, which is this similar thing to Richmond Park, really. Um, most of the issues are, concer are concerning inconsiderate, dry, uh, inconsiderate parking. Um, we have people parking uh, on bends there, so for example Waterfield Close uh, and Jarman's in particular, uh, where people are just parking on the corners as of the exits of both these roads um, and, and c frankly causing a dangerous situation. Residents are trying to drive out of these, uh, these exit of, exits of course and they, they just can't see. You have to nudge right out into the centre of Waterfield Drive to, to escape. Uh, the exit, which is quite dangerous, I think. Um, anyway, again, I've been to highways. Uh, I've given them your concerns, and they've come up with uh, with a, with a scheme to put uh, limited parking on uh, the bend, or no parking, in fact, on three of the bends. So it'll be the the westerly direction bend coming out of Waterfield Close, um, the east and west bend or corner rather coming out of Jarmins, um, and that should mean that when as residents come out of those uh, come out of those junctions they should be able to see quite clearly um, the left hand bend or the um, the east facing bend coming out of Waterville close won't be done um, that's because if you remember I, I asked for the double yellow lines at the bottom of Waterfield Drive uh, that's between the bus stop there and um, and uh, Silkmills Road uh, to be double double yellow lined and they've already done that of course I'm sorry Sorry on behalf of the council that it did take so long to do, but at least it's now done. And, uh, and I think certainly everybody I met on the Saturday the 24th, uh, thank you all for coming by the way, um, everyone seemed to agree that that actually has made Waterfield Drive much safer. So that, that's good news. But those are the three, three uh, bends, if you like, corners that will have new parking restrictions on. And I'm rather hoping these will be completed um, 
probably July, August time. That's the sort of guesstimate I've now been given by the council. I did think it might take up to a year, but it does sound it's going to be less time than that. Um, so, so that's good news. Uh, moving forward to um, the corner opposite or the bend opposite Nether Clay. Um, this has been a bit of a nightmare. Uh, uh, probably most of most of the mail I've had on parking has been, has been about that particular bend. Um, there is going to be, the council have already agreed to put um, a, a no parking uh, lines on that bend and only on that bend. Uh, they won't be taking away parking spaces from anyone because you really should not be parking on that bend. It's very dangerous. Um, and in just the, the same way that parking um, shouldn't occur in Waterfield Drive as it has, um, this inconsiderate parking in both cases actually does contravene the highway code um, 243 in both cases. So you shouldn't be parking there if you are. Um, and in fact, these new lines will now stop and prevent the, uh, the, the parking happening there. This will make exiting Netherclay much easier. Um, it'll also mean that, so for example, the number three bus, the, the waste lorries, etc., can actually go around that will we'll be able to get around that bend properly and safely without having to overtaking, overtake these odd cars and vans that do park there for some reason um, and effectively blocking up the village. If anybody's coming the other way, there's just no way of reversing back and it causes complete chaos and takes a long time to clear the traffic in those examples. So if you are watching this and you are somebody who does park on that bend, please show a little consideration. It is quite dangerous there. Um, it's also difficult for school children too. They, they use that as a crossing before and after school uh, for those people who live in the, in the Nether Clay region there. Um, so it's quite difficult for them to get, get, a, get across the road there. So if you're not parked there, or if, if vehicles are not parked there, then clearly this will make things a lot safer for them. Um, moving on to Shootwater Close. Uh, Shootwater Close is, if you go down Shootwater Hill, it's the first right at the bottom. Um, and inside Shootwater Close there, the, the parking situation there is uh, is very, very difficult in the, in the whole area there. The area obviously was built in the 60s, or most of it was built in the 60s. Um, when of course if you owned a car you were actually doing very well for yourself. It was quite unusual to own a car back in that day. Um, now of course most people have two and some have more vehicles than that um, and it is almost impossible to park there. It's very very difficult indeed. I completely understand why you are all so frustrated with the situation but I hope you can understand also from a council perspective and I'm certainly not taking their side, my only side is your side um, but, it, but how do you cure that problem? Having said that, I do believe we may have come up with a cure. Uh, one of the local residents there suggested to me um, that we turn the grassed area in uh, Shootwater Close into a car park. Uh, now, actually, I, when, I, when I first heard that, I thought, what a great idea, and no way will the council go for that. But actually, having discussed this part with, with Somerset County Council Highways Department, they were pretty keen. Uh, it will cost money, um, but they do feel they found a pot of money somewhere that they can perhaps gain access to to build this new car park for everybody down there. Um, it'll mean that uh, I reckon you probably get 10, 11 spaces in the car park there with people driving into it rather than parking alongside it, if you see what I mean. Um, and these, uh, these spaces should clear the five or six cars that are currently parked on the, on the bends, the corners as you come out of shoot water close and should make things up, make things, I hope, considerably better down there. It's not going to cure the problem, but it's, it's certainly going to be a big help. So those things are all those four areas. They are very much uh, in, in, in progress. I think there's a good chance of them happening. Um, if any of you would like to support those, which many of you already have, but if any of you would like to support them, please contact me with, a, with an email supporting this. The email will be on this video, so you'll be able to um, contact me via that. Um, Likewise, if you object to any of these, of course, you have very much that right to do that. So please do so if you do object. Uh, obviously, I'd like your reasons either way. That would that would be very important too. Um, I would also like to say to everybody who's supported me with this, I've, I asked you some time ago for your photograph, photographs of um, badly parked vehicles. Um, I've had, well, not, I don't know if I've had hundreds, but I've had tens of photographs, certainly. Um, sent to me and I was able to use all these photographs in support of my claim for the various uh, for the ver various schemes that we're trying to get in place here for you um, and actually without them I don't think I'd have got this through so thank you very much uh, for your support in that issue thank you
Right, okay, so on to the next subject, which is the snow. Um, not a great beer for us all, was it? It's very cold and uh, quite uh, quite serious. It's the worst snow I've seen in Bishop's Hall, certainly. Um, first of all, many, many thanks to um, all of you who volunteered to do various things over the over the two or three day snow period. Many of you in your, uh, I spent two days walking around, spoke to, spoke to lots of you. Um, and uh, you were all knocking on people's doors, making sure they were okay, digging snow away from uh, particularly the elderly, elderly people's uh, front doors. Um, digging out your own roads, big, big groups of you doing that together, which was great, great team spirit shown. And uh, it was just so nice to see. I know I know several of you with four wheel drives who assisted at the hospital driving nurses and doctors about. Hats off to you. Um, so many people doing so much for other people. And it was lovely to see the village coming together in a true community spirit. It was lovely. And uh, the one thing I would just like to suggest to the parish councillors, if I may, um, the one thing we needed was some sort of help, uh, not a helpline as such, but we needed a group of people who can go out there and assist those that need help in the village. And there was no group. Now, maybe we should have thought of this before, I don't know. But in that, in that uh, over that two-day period, particularly Friday and Saturday, um, there was no one to call. Everyone was, all, all the emergency services were clearly far too busy uh, getting people out that were stuck on the A303, etc. Um, but in the village here, we had no group of people. Yes, we did organise our own group of people, um, uh, particularly on the Saturday, uh, who helped out knocking on doors uh, to make sure our elderly are OK. Uh, thank you, by the way, to those of you that did that. I won't name you because that's embarrassing for you, but, but thank you. Um, but we need a group, I, I would suggest five volunteers. I'd be happy to head that, don't have an issue with that, uh, where we can make the phone call to them, get them together, and just knock on everybody's door that needs help, or we think needs help. We can identify, in the meantime, the areas that need the help, because we were a bit unsure, I have to say, when we were walking around on the Saturday. You know, some people have their red buttons they can press to say, that, hey, I need help, can you come and help me? Others don't. And uh, we, we need more information and we, we certainly don't have it, or I certainly don't have it. Um, and if others do, then please contact me and, uh, uh, and, and help us to help ourselves. That's what we need. Okay, so on to the next subject, which is the police. Um, I met with the police on the 18th of February at Taunton Police Station. It was a Sunday morning. Uh, a couple of hours chat with them. Uh, I, I asked for the meeting because I wanted to um, get a better understanding of where we are with the police. In, uh, here in Bishop's Hall. Um, I've been very frustrated and I know speaking to many of you, you too feel the same as I do, that actually sometimes we wonder why the police don't act on certain occasions, uh, particularly with things like parking, antisocial behaviour. And actually having met them now I've got a better understanding. My, my frustration, I, I did tell them how frustrated I was at the meeting and, and they managed to um, give me a give me their version of it if you like uh, which was important to hear and, and to get a better understanding of why there is an issue about them acting on various things that we think should be acted on but actually uh, sometimes it's not necessary however I did go through the meeting we discussed antisocial behavior uh, we talked about um, inconsiderate parking um, CCTV um, how to use the emergency numbers 999 and 101 um, and actually, I, I think now I have a, a, a better overview um, of what the police can and can't do. Um, and clearly, they are very much hands tied behind their back financially. Uh, they're not being helped uh, with any sort of monies at all. Um, but I think I have a better understanding of that now. So if you have any issues um, and you want to discuss them with me, I, I, hopefully I can enable you to understand what I've learnt to understand from them. Uh, so please do contact me. Right, okay, on to a vegetation issue now, which uh, which occurred in, um, or on Silk Mills Road. Um, one of our um, local residents, a lady in her 80s, uh, was walking down, this, this occurred on fr Friday the 9th of um, February, uh, walking down the uh, pavement there on Silk Mills Road, opposite Gillard's, um, fell, this is, we think avoiding the vegetation that was sticking out onto the pavement there. 
actually rolled into the main silk mills road, actually onto the road in front of an oncoming vehicle. Um, thankfully, this oncoming vehicle was doing one, two, three miles an hour, uh, very slow because there had been um, an incident on the M5. So the M5 was closed, hence silk mills was absolutely chock a block. Fortunately for this lady, um, the passenger in the car got out, helped her to her feet, minor bruising, and she phoned me later that day to tell me what had happened and what could we do about it. Um, we were lucky. This lady was very lucky. I phoned, um, I phoned the uh, DLO and uh, our parish clerk, Helen, who was obviously very helpful. I went out myself to cut back um, as much of this um, offending vegetation that I could get out. I'm not a great gardener, I'm afraid, so I didn't make a very good job of it. Um, but did manage to cut back some of it. Darren, who works for the parish council, also came out to help me move away the, the sort of disposed branches and things to keep them off the main road. So thank you for that, Darren. Um, and DLO did eventually come out. Um, this was uh, about a week later, perhaps a bit less than that, uh, to cut back the vegetation on the basis that the parish council would pay for this to be cut back. Um, that's a separate issue, who pays? Um, but it was down to the parish council to pay for that. Um, they have cut it back and uh, they've also taken the pavement itself um, is about a third overgrown or was. They've now cut that back, taken back that, uh, regained, if you like, reclaimed the full width of the pavement. So it's now when you walk down, it is, it is much, much safer to walk on now. Um, so that part has been done. Um, I did also raise this at Fall Council, Somerset County Council, on the 21st of February, um, asking that the Somerset County Council and Taunton Dean Barrow Council get together, uh, rather than working what appears to be at the moment against each other, uh, to actually get these obvious areas of overgrowth of vegetation on main road pavements like Silk Mills Road. Get those cut, get them sorted out. Don't worry about whose cost it is first. Get it done, worry about the cost afterwards. Apparently, according to another Somerset County Councillor uh, who's on the Borough Council in, in South Somerset, um, he tells me that it, it, South Somerset's way of doing is they have a problem, they come out, deal with that problem, I in this case Silk Mills Road, and they worry about who's gonna pay for it afterwards. The problem in the past has been can't get people out to cut down the cut down the vegetation because Taunton Dean or Somerset County Council can't work out between them who owns that piece of ground. Now that doesn't matter. I know it's money and, and money's tight at the moment, but we're talking about a small amount of money here. And this needs to be particularly on main roads attacked immediately and sorted out. So I'm hoping that what I said in full council will have some effect. I will also and have in fact written uh, emails on the same subject. Uh, but the Parish Council, thank you, Helen, our Parish Clerk, uh, for acting so swiftly, um, has also asked the same question. Um, and I feel sure in the future we can overcome these problems a lot quicker, but we will, I will, and I'm pretty sure I would ask the Parish Council to support me with this. Uh, I will continue to push for these areas to be done much quicker. We cannot allow what happened to this resident uh, to happen to anybody else. She was very lucky. But uh, on any other day, if the M5 hadn't been closed, I do think we'd be talking about a possible fatality here. So this is very serious indeed. So we need to act on this and we need to do it quickly. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like to contact me, please email me on john at bishopshull.com. Thank you.